When Panthera's Leopard Project started at Pinda Private Game Reserve in South Africa, the area's local leopard population was under severe threat. Fences did little to keep the big cats inside the protected reserve, and once they left Pinda's boundaries, they were often hunted and killed. Today, thanks to nearly a decade of research and policy changes, the leopard population density is increasing and big cats are more likely to return to and stay in and around the reserve. They, they tend not to be by the roads. <laughs> but that hasn't made Tristan Dickerson's research any easier. It's early morning when his team sets out. He wants a full day to locate, capture and recall Menzi, the reserve's dominant male. If you were to just drive up to leopards every day and everyone who wanted to see a leopard saw one, they would become boring and then, you know, no one, it, it wouldn't have the same appeal as it does now where they, you've got to really work hard to have a sighting. He spotted Menzi's tracks close to bait that the team put out the night before. There's a good chance he's in the area. Okay, so he's here at the bait. We'll just, we're just letting him settle down a bit and then we'll move in closer and just see if he'll stay in the open and we can just form him a bit. So we're not doing anything to him now, but the, this evening we'll, we'll try dart him and change his colour. It would be too risky to dart Menzi so early in the morning. The wind has the big cat on edge, and leopards are also more relaxed at night. Okay, then just everyone sit dead still now. You'll calm down a bit. He's very nervous right now. You can see it looks like he wants to either leave or stay. His ears are down, which isn't a good sign. If you look on the back of his collar, there's just wires sticking up, so that's been ripped off by, by something, and that's why we need to change his collar. This is just due to their nature. This is why they're so successful outside of protected areas, because they're elusive, they tend to avoid people, and they have extremely good camouflage. And also being solitary makes them successful for, for surviving outside of protected areas. So the, their whole package is the reason why they still occur when, and are still fairly abundant through, through Africa. But, I mean, their numbers are still dropping. You know, they're not immune to hunting and poaching. So we've still got to look after them. We can't leave it till it's too late. This morning, for this wind, it's a problem. So this morning we got to maybe 20 meters, which I mean, we can get to that. Close to dusk, the team returns to the spot. Dickerson prepares the dart. We'll do measurements and change color. If you can uh, take some blood. The team spots Menzi in thick bush. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Even if he stands up here, we're going to struggle. Dickinson decides to circle back, looking for a clear shot. It's a clean hit, and in a few minutes, Menzi is sedated. The team moves in and begins measurements. So this leopard's got very small feet for his size. Um, even on the measurements noticeably, and as we can see it in his tracks, he's got the same size feet as a sub-adult. Yet he's a monster. He's not liking this. Right canine, 44. After measurements are taken and blood is drawn, it's time to replace Menzi's broken transmitter. For Dickerson, it's a moment that never grows old. Now that his team is again connected to the cat, their research can continue. This has been groundbreaking and I think it's, we're going to feel positive effects from this research for many, many years to come. And it could be one of the cornerstones of securing these big cats into the future because we have to understand that uh, although the distribution of leopards particularly is particularly widespread, they are still severely under threat and their habitat is disappearing every single day. We're going to have to learn to manage the islands that exist much better and the interactions between the islands have to be better understood. How we can move genetics between these different islands that are now developing because of man's development. With 90% of leopard range falling into privately owned land, we need to make sure that the leopards have some value to those landowners so that they will then continue to 
conserve leopards themselves. Dickerson says he's drawn to the leopard because of its adaptability. And it's a survivor, that's exactly what it is. Even with, with humans on this planet who are destroying everything, the leopard tends to uh, survive and persist. His research shows whether leopards merely persist or thrive in the wild is up to the adaptability of man. Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank. Zenith Bank, in your best interest.